Okay, so this is the reason why we canceled Bible class tonight. We got a pretty, uh, pretty big storm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I have to work on that. But uh, yeah, we didn't want the ladies out in this uh, flash flood alert. So cancel. Uh, Bible class tonight, but I just want to try to explain Why from the scriptures I'm having such a, a delayed Why it's taking me so long to get through the 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 uh, 24 chapter of Matthew Okay You know And 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 let me let me let me kind of explain myself because we've been working with the 24th chapter for months literally and I'm not out of the 24th chapter I, I'm just okay because the 24th chapter of Matthew I tell you let me tell you <laughs> I'm trying to it's it's Matthew has a lot of prophecies that are fulfilled in it. Let me share this verse with you, Revelations, the 10th chapter. Look at verse, the last sentence in verse 10. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Right there. Okay, let me. This is one of the things that separates the Christian faith. The Bible that we read, the apostolic faith, that's all, you know, is that the testimony of Jesus, who we proclaim as the one true God, is the spirit of prophecy. Now, let me, let me tell you, I, I used, years ago, oh, maybe 20 years ago or so, um, I was, uh, it was a, like a, a mixture of things that happened all at, all at once. There were some guys that came on the little TV station and they were attacking the Bible. They were attacking the Bible. They were, they were attacking the Christian faith, they said. Uh, you know, the problem with you Christians, you know, is that you believe uh, 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 the Bible and you can't trust the Bible, they were saying. You know, you can't trust the Bible because the Bible was written... By the white man and the white man has just uh, he's just uh, he has uh, 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 you know it, it's been it's, it's not properly translated and the white man is the enemy and and uh, you Christian you especially you black so-called Christians you're, you're you're just following slave religion that the white man created to keep you in bondage you know and I just got I got furious man so I just said, uh, okay, I basically got to a point where I said, Lord, I said, I want you to, uh, uh, I want you to show me in the scriptures, you know, what, the things that separate our faith and the Bible from all the other religions of the world, all the other uh, 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 sacred texts of the world. I want you to help me understand. So the Lord kind of Bless me to go through a study in the book of Isaiah. This is 20, man, you know, maybe, you know, uh, I guess you could say 15 years ago or so. All right. So I'm reading through Isaiah and, 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 and I'll show you something that, that I and, and it was a perfect. Uh, I said perfect storm in a sense of while these other guys were on the television, you know, proclaiming that. The Bible was written by the white man and you can't trust it and you have to go back to the study of, I'm not even going to mention what they were talking about. Anyway, but you, 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 you can't trust the Bible as a black man because it was written by white people and, 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 and it's, you know, you've been brainwashed by uh, the Europeans to be subservient and to, uh, uh, you know, be o obedient to them and... And you can't trust your Bible, uh, and it was, it's not made for the black man and all this kind of stuff. 
So I'm, I'm, so I take the very book that they told me was, was, uh, you know, untrustworthy. And I says, Lord, I want you to take this very book that they say is untrustworthy. And I want you to show me in the word, the things that separate you from all the other gods and all the other false religions. So I'm, I'm going through, and you know, uh, one of the blessings that the Lord blessed me to find was in Isaiah. 48th chapter, Isaiah, book of Isaiah, chapter 48, and I'm reading, you know, and, and, and as you, 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 you discover, you, as Bishop uh, Morris Golder said, you, you won't know nothing about God unless he reveals himself to you. So unless God opens your understanding, you'll just be reading words on a page. So I'm reading 48th chapter. And I get down to verse 3. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth. And I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Right there. Very important. I did them suddenly. See, <laughs> one of the other things that was going on was while these, while these, uh, these, these, uh, 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 guys were on TV uh, propagating uh, African, uh, whatever, whatever it is. You know. uh, they were also a group of psychics that were that were on TV, and the psychics. I, I got to move around a little bit because you know I just just the way I do it. anyway. So <clears throat> uh, uh, while while the while the uh, while these guys were attacking, you know, the Christian faith and the, and the Bible, there was another group of people that were on on uh, uh, psychics and they were like uh, I'll tell you this and I'll tell you the future and I'll tell you what's going to happen and you, you, you send me $20 or whatever whatever, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell you your future and all that kind of stuff and I'm like well, how did they do that? Where did they get that that from? That power from to tell the future? How did they do it? Because they got it so accurate and they can talk to the dead and all that. How do they, how do they talk to dead people? How do they do that? And I'm like Lord I got one group of people you know, talking talking to the dead, and they got all this power to do this kind of thing, and to tell the future. And I'm I'm seeing how does this happen? And the Lord, I'm back in Isaiah. I'm I'm gonna come back to 48, and in the eighth chapter, the Lord led me to read to see this scripture. You you the answers to all the things that bother you in life, believe it or not, are in the Word of God. Well, I'm in the eighth chapter of Isaiah, and I'm reading. And I got all these things in the back of my mind about these, these, uh, you know, these, uh, these psychics and all that stuff. I come down to verse 19, 8 chapter of, of Isaiah, and this is what it reads. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Look, you know them people that talk to the dead? You know, they hold hands at them seances and, oh, I'm getting in touch with your old Uncle Jim. And, oh, your grandmother Lizzie is telling me where she put the money. And they mutter, they peep, they look into the dim unknown and they, they uh, you know, mutter and all that kind of stuff. It says, look what, look, what, look what God inspired Isaiah to write. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? In other words, what in the world are you, you that are alive? What do you need to learn from people that are dead? Ask God, the living God. Now, see, see, that's another Bible class right there. See, because see, because Hagar is that her name? I think it's Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. She, she, one of the things she said when she was God was speaking to her, she said, uh, uh, "The living one uh, who sees me, you know, and and he, you know, our God is a living one. He sees you. He sees you when you cry. He sees you. He knows what you're going through. You, he's, you, you your suffering is not invisible to him. He's gonna." Uh, reward those that persecute you and all, all that. So, anyway, verse verse twenty eight, chapter of Isaiah, to the law and to the testimony. Let's stick with the word. In other words, stick with what God spoke. The living God. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Do you get that? So all these psychics that tell you what Grandma Lizzie told you and all this other stuff. If they don't tell you what the word says, they don't have no light in them. And you ain't going to find no psychic that's going to tell you what the word says, because the word say don't go to no psychic. 
This is not hard, people. You understand? And, and, and what these demons are doing, these psychics and these seance and palm readers and tarot card readers, it ain't new. This stuff is, this book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah has got to be 2,700 years old. So all this stuff, you know, is not new. All right, all right, all right. So the Lord showed me, I don't care what these psychics tell you. I don't care how much of it is accurate. I don't care if they don't acknowledge the word of God, that you need to repent from your sins and what are the things you got to repent from is listening to psychics. If they don't tell you that, why would they not tell you that? It's because there's no light in them. That's Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 through through uh, 20. All right, so I said, thank you, Jesus. I, you, you gave me the answer to that, that question. All right, let's go back to Isaiah, the 48 chapter. All right, the 48 chapter of Isaiah. Okay, and so, and I'm reading Isaiah, the 48 chapter. That's the difference between, you remember what we talked about in the third verse of, of the 48th chapter of Isaiah? I did them suddenly. Now see, the difference between the psychics and the one true God is that they can tell you what's going to happen. But God is the only one that can not only tell you what's going to happen in the future, but he's the only one that has the power to make it happen. They can tell me, oh, John, on your 59th birthday, you're going to get a brand new coffee. <laughs> you know, I'm a, but, uh, 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 but only God not only can tell me the future, but make it come to pass. Okay, so I kept on reading, and that's the difference between the psychic and the Lord Jesus Christ. He has a power to not only prophesy of what is to come, but to make it come to pass. Psychics can't do that. Verse 5, he says, of the, of the, of the uh, 48 chapter, I, say, I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Look at this. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee. I want you to remember that phrase right there. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee. Lest thou shouldest say, mine idol had done them, and my graven image and my molten image have uh, commanded them. Because God said, I know what you're going to do. I know what you, you're going to say your idols did that. You're going to lie and say that you, your psychic told you. you see, 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 man, see the book of Isaiah talks about the Chaldeans, and it talks about the sons of Noph and the Egyptian uh, princes, and they, they could tell the future, and that was, the children of Israel were so impressed with all their ability to, to tell the future, and they just were like, oh my goodness, these Egyptians are so brilliant, they're so smart, they're so intelligent, and we just some old poor Israelites, we don't know nothing like them, and so God starts speaking through Isaiah and says, you know what, you want to know the future? I, I, and he starts and, and he started, Israel, you want to know, uh, uh, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and he shall save his people from his, the Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the 11th chapter, going back to the 7th chapter, and God started telling them of the Messiah to come to save the world from their sins. He said, you want to know the future? I'm going to tell you the future, you know, and your Egyptian uh, uh, intellectuals and scientists can't touch what I what God showed uh, the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. All right, all right, back to Isaiah 48, chapter 7. He says, uh, uh, they are created now, and uh, not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heard them not, lest thou shouldest say, behold, I knew them. God knew the treachery that, you know, we can fool. We, we have a tendency to deceive ourselves, and, and so God had to do some things and tell some things that no one could foretell but him. Come on down to verse, I'm going to show you a little bit about oneness, apostolicism. Verse 12 of, of Isaiah, uh, uh, the 48th chapter, verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my call, I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Now this is what Jehovah God, the Father, says. Now if you just kindly turn your Bibles to a book called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this Bible calls it, they saying that ain't right. The Revelation of St. John, uh, no, no, no. Read, read what it says in the first verse of Revelation. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, okay, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. There he is again, letting us know of the things to to come to pass before they happen. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of the things that he saw, all right? So 
The book of Revelation is a revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. I want you to come on down to verse uh, on the book of Revelation. Look at verse eight. Where it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. Well, step on down a little further. Verse 11, first chapter of Revelations, saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Who? The first and the last. Now, if you believe in a trinity... Jesus just said, I'm the first and the last. You go on down to verse 17, and he says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. Hallelujah to God. I am the first and the last. Now that's Jesus. If you make the mistake, let me finish that verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. That's the resurrection, y'all. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Lord, have mercy. Uh, but if you believe in a trinity, Jesus just said, no, no, the Father's not first. I'm the first. So, you know, there's no confusion. They ain't, they ain't arguing or squabbling. That. That's just Jesus' way of saying, I am the Father. In the name of Jesus. God, I love you. I appreciate you. So, so, all right, so... Now, I read to you that 48th chapter of, of, of uh, Isaiah where he said, I tell you things that before it comes to pass, I tell you these things. Come on with me to the book of St. John. I want to show you something. St. John, the 13th chapter. St. John, the 13th chapter. And let's look at verse 19. Verse 19, St. John, the 13th chapter, verse 19. Now, I tell you, now remember what Jehovah God, see, 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 we got to understand. These Jewish people, these Israelites of that day, they were aware of the Old Testament Genesis through, uh, what is it, Malachi? They understood that. That was in the day. They, they came every Sabbath to hear the word in the temple. They had the word in their hearts. So when Jesus would say this, now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Why does Jesus tell us things before it happens? Why does he do that? He started in the Garden of Eden and said, when the, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, telling them that uh, the, the seed of the woman, well, women don't have seed, but it was his way of speaking of the virgin birth. Mary, the, 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 the child that came from her was not born by uh, flesh. And blood, that was not, con she didn't conceive by flesh and blood. She re conceived by the Holy Ghost. So the seed of the woman, Jesus, would bruise the head of the serpent. And uh, of course, the serpent bruised his heel. So he was prophesying, he was telling them what was going to happen thousands of years ahead, in advance, before it occurred. See, Jesus has been doing this from the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, the spirit of prophecy, that's, his, that's what separates Jesus from all these other gods. Well, I, don't, I don't know. There are millions of gods, Brother John. There are millions of religions. How do I know? Jesus shows you that he's the only one that has the ability to tell you what's going to happen before it happens, and it happens without fail. So, so he doesn't just do this. You know, he, he, he's, if this is his way. He can show you the skeptical mind, the skeptic. Because I made some mistakes in my life as a young man, and I was, a, I was skeptical. God forgive me. He was merciful. He didn't kill me. He didn't cut me off when I was stupid. All right? Okay? So when you brought up in church and you were preacher's son and you were, okay. Oh, Lord. You know, and you say, well, I, that's what they taught me. I, you know, I, I got to go see if it's, uh, I got to try out the world, see for myself. Well, thank God I didn't get a chance to really go out and try a whole bunch of stuff. But what I did try was enough to get me thrown in state penitentiary for the rest of my life unless God had delivered me. OK, and that's a whole nother Bible class by itself. Pornography addiction. You know, man, let, me, let me just let me just push pause right here. And listen, man, I'm. Honest to goodness, I'm getting a little tired of this addiction, this addiction, that. I got to go find that, that verse that says, uh, and, they, they, and they addicted themselves to the work of God, uh, and they became addicted to the work. Uh, something along them lines. I got to go. Anyway, but all these, all these addictions, uh, I can't stop it. I can, listen, here's, you, you, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the answer to all addictions. Heroin 
opioids, uh, uh, cocaine crack, uh, pornography addiction, uh, you can't stop watching pornography, sexual addiction, whatever you did, here it is, same thing, repent, same thing, this is the only thing, stop, you know, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop uh, uh, James Valer preached a message, I missed it, my, my wife was, I always drive trucks long haul, and I missed it, that message he preached years ago, but he preached a sermon called The First Night in Hell. And my wife, you know, this is about 25, 20 years, 20, 20 years ago, whatever. I came home off the road and I, my wife was still walking the floor at night. And, oh, John, you should have heard that message, Bishop Valet. I said, oh, what was it, baby? Oh, he preached a message called The First Night in Hell. And, I, and just the title got me scared. Listen, all this stuff about addictions and you can't stop, let me tell you. You go to hell, your first few seconds in hell, you're going to understand. What's the first thing you're going to understand? I could have stopped. So see, you know, and, uh, well, no, you got to pray through. You got to get a, a refilling of the Holy Ghost for you. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Jonah going to preach to the Ninevites. They don't have no Holy Ghost. But God is telling them people, if y'all don't repent, if y'all don't stop, I'm going to destroy this place. Okay. So John the Baptist is preaching before the day of Pentecost, before the Holy Ghost fell, and his message was, repent, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You can stop. You have the ability to stop. Whatever it is you say you're addicted to, you can stop. Okay? Now, you know, you can, be, you know, and, and, uh, don't, don't, don't give some knucklehead $300 and join some therapist and all that stuff to let them tell you what I'm telling you right now, save you. You know, you know, I'm trying to tell you, save your money and just do what Jesus has been uh, 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 showing us in the scriptures. Stop. Repent. But repent also means turn around and go the other way. So don't just stop. Turn and go back towards God. All right. Uh, OK. So. So. All right. And this is this is pretty much uh, uh, the last one of the last scriptures, not the last. 14 chapter of St. John, 14 chapter of St. John, and, 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 and look at verse 29, Jesus says it again, 29th verse of the 14th chapter of St. John, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe, good Lord, man, that's it. So why does Jesus, why does he, why does he work in the, 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 the uh, spirit of prophecy? Why does he give us these details of what he's going to do before he does it? So that when it happens, you can say, oh, Jesus told me that was going to happen. Ain't you ever had nothing in your experience, in your life experience, where God tell you something and sure enough it happened? <clears throat> well, that's one of the reasons that Jesus does what he does, why he always tells us what's going to happen before it happens, so that you might know this thing is real. I'm on the right path. I'm serving the right God. I can trust my Bible and all this. Not, you know what? Can I, can, I, can I just push pause right here and say, oh, Lord, help me to get. Um, when you hear people tell you you can't trust the Bible because it was written by the white man. Let me let me say something. That makes whoever says that. Uh, let me be kind hearted right now. Um, it really makes you look very ignorant. I think I'm sanitizing this quite well. Uh, uh, because you see, Lord. Um, The majesty of the scriptures, the omniscience displayed in the word of God is above any intellect known to humanity or, or humankind. When you attribute the omniscience of Jesus, the omniscience of almighty God, the veracity and the, and the indisputable truth of the word of God to a man that's an insult that you are going to have to answer to God for you would be you would do yourself good if you keep your mouth off of the word of God 
if you're serious as a scholar, as an African, a study of African studies and African history and ancient, uh, you know, history and all these kind of things, you want to keep your mouth off of the Bible. If you're serious. Now, if you're an idiot, well, then, you know, there's no hope for you. I, you know, you're unteachable anyway. But if, if you're serious, if you have if you have an honest heart, there's too much omniscience exhibited in the scriptures, too much that cannot be disproven, irrefutable, undeniable things in the I'll give you an example. One of the things is how Jesus in the 24 hour, you know, I was saying we have such a problem. The 24 chapter is so loaded with beauty and loveliness in the in the first Matthew, the 24th chapter, man, and I'm running, I, you know, Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 1, I, I, I told a class, I said, I'm going to start, and we're going to, you we're going to start studying the 24th chapter of Matthew, and, uh, and, and we have, we have, we just not even tip of the iceberg, got down to verse 1, the 24th chapter of Matthew, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and it was like, <clears throat> the Lord started dealing with me right there and just, it's just, he, he laid on my heart and mind the, the ninth, the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh chapters of Ezekiel where the spirit of the Lord departed the temple. Listen, when you understand that Jesus is God, and I meant to say that earlier uh, when I was talking about what Jesus says in, 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 in uh, 48 chapter of Isaiah, I'm the first, I'm the last. Jesus says the same thing that Jehovah God, the the Father says in 48 chapter of Isaiah, verse 12, well, when you understand that Jesus is God, when you read that and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, listen, and he told them, he told them when they came and uh, asked him about it, he said to them in verse 2, he says, of that uh, 24 chapter of Matthew, see ye not all? These things, very last saying to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That prophecy was fulfilled some decades later after Jesus ascended back into heaven. Uh, the Romans besieged that city, and that was what we were supposed to study part, partly tonight, but I haven't finished getting the study material again. Anyway, long story short. The temple's been torn down. But also the, 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 the law, the Mosaic practices, trying to follow the, the law that God gave Moses, that's been done away with by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the lamb for sinners slain. You cannot go back to the, to the old covenant to serve God. You have to come to the new covenant. Water baptism in Jesus' name under a repentant heart. The infilling of the Holy Ghost is evidenced by when you receive it, you will speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. You know, that's the new covenant. And God says, I'm going to write my my law upon your hearts. It's not going to be reading a tablet and going to the synagogue and hearing some high priest talk about. It. We don't even have a high priest uh, uh, order anymore. You can't serve the law. There's no temple. There's no high priest. You, you, understand, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus, he when he when he left the temple, listen, he's done with that. And when he was crucified, the, the, the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. Nobody was able to do it. No man was able to. Only God could do that. Separating man from God, the holies of holies from, from humanity. Now God indwells, his spirit indwells us by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Your bodies are the temple. There's no more uh, temple in Israel that you go to to serve God under the Mosaic law. Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost when you receive it uh, by the spirit of God indwelling you. And Jesus is the Holy Ghost for the book of Romans says, uh, 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 where... Um, where the spirit of liberty is, where the spirit is, there is liberty, and that spirit is Christ. See, Jesus is the spirit. He is the Holy uh, Ghost, the Holy Spirit. But, but, uh, you know, I interrupted myself, but I was just uh, 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 trying to say that if you don't understand that Jesus is God, you, you're not, you're going to miss out on so much. <laughs> yeah, about this, about this, when, when people tell you that <clears throat> you can't trust the Bible written by what. You, you you make you make you make yourself look bad if you call yourself a, an intellectual and you say that you can't trust and I, I'm 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 just you know trying to help some people see listen you can trust the word of God and don't let nobody tell you 
that if you're Christian and you're black, that you're serving, uh, uh, you're, the, you're the white man's uh, 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 step and fetch it. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really. This year, I want to try to, you know, uh, not let the knuckleheads get to me, for real, because uh, this, 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 this idiocy that is, that is, uh, we, we, we really think a lot of us are saying something smart and we're making fools of ourselves. You can trust your Bible. You can trust the word of God. And, 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 and all this, listen, <laughs> don't get caught up in racism, hating white people. And, 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 uh, we got to get the segregation out of the churches. That's 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 a major project, you know, but uh, that's 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 a that's a whole new class right there. And that ain't God's fault. All right. All this Holy Ghost and then folk can't uh, uh, submit one to another. All right. You know, so so and, and God, when the Zusa Street was started off, we be having this 100 year anniversary and all this kind of thing. Uh, uh, but when the Zusa Street started off, God didn't start off with a segregated church. Prejudice started that. And people gonna answer to God for that mess and nonsense. All right. But at the same time, when you got another group of people telling black people that you can't trust the Bible because it was written by white folks and you got to go back to the Mosaic law or you got to go back to or you got to go to Islam or you got to go to worship in Egyptology, the Coptic faith and honest to goodness, honestly. If you just want to know what the true word of God is, I don't have it's too many idiots to keep up with. Honestly, you can only be so nice, you know, because fools are blind and they'll lead you if you're blind. But if you know, <laughs> if you know the word, if you know what separates Jesus from all these other false gods, you can make it. You can make it. And that's a fact. OK. So and you and, 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 and it's it's written in the scriptures, it's undeniable, it's irref, it's irrefutable. Jesus is God, you can trust the word, and uh <clears throat> please don't be deceived by the <clears throat> there again, that's back to the twenty-fourth chapter of Matthew. <laughs> Jesus says a lot of them are gonna come in my name and deceive many. You know, it's in the word, all the answers you need. Or in this word, please don't let nobody use emotionalism to make you turn on the word of God. You can trust the Bible. All right. Love you. Appreciate you. Uh, you know, of course, after you shut off a uh, Bible class, the rain stops. But we had to do the safe thing and all that kind of thing. And I thank God. But uh, be blessed. Don't let nobody fool you. Didn't get to sh share and 